Now, as we've talked about earlier in the show, the Met Service has fallen on its sword, admitting its weather forecasting models performed badly ahead of the devastating Auckland anniversary floods that resulted in loss of life and billions of dollars in damage. It's an event our next guest knows all too well. Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown joins us this morning to talk about that and um, more in terms of transport. Um, Mayor Brown, thanks for coming in this morning. Um, so we've seen these documents from Met Service that have talked about the conversations they were having that night. And one of the comments somebody made was, this is madness, our models were not predicting this. Were you getting the sense that night they were having these conversations? Did you know they were so surprised by what was happening? No, in fact, I, I was surprised by what was happening because there was no warning of what was going to happen at all. And our own... Um, Emergency people made a few blunders as well. Nobody had my phone number, for instance. Um, I got a fair caning from the from the um, uh, press, including you guys, um, for, predict, for failing to predict something that the weather forecasters couldn't predict. They said us, they told us there was going to be 20 mils of rain, and there was four, there was 20 times what they they did. And so um, um, it's taken them a while to come good on, but I'm glad they have. Mm. Uh, it would have been nice if they'd owned up a bit earlier, but um, I think we've, we've all learned from that. We got stuck in and fixed the, and improved the performance of Auckland's emergency management because we it was tested about five days later and it went a lot better. Yeah. And so I did manage to make sure that that was fixed quite quickly. Uh, and whilst it, as Jim Hickey pointed out, that it's difficult. He actually seemed to understand it pretty well. And so um, with all the money and um, satellites and what's and not, well, bits and pieces, I think they could have done better. It's a tricky and one, I, isn't at it? At least because... now the media might understand that sometimes not everything's the mayor's fault. Well, no, I mean, as everybody said, this is just not something that could have been predicted in the days following, obviously. And the Mike Bush report obviously has shown that there's been many changes and recommendations to have come out of that, right? Um, mm. We don't need to go over all of that. Um, but good to get your response to that report this morning. I also want to talk to you about transport because we know now that with National coming into government that light rail looks almost certain to be off the cards. But that's something that you said you're still quite open to in some form. And Chloe Sawbrick was on the couch this morning and said that she's been chatting with you about that. What conversations have you two been having? Oh, we have a beer now and again because she's a neighbour, so, uh, <laughs> and they cover all sorts of things. Um, light rail among them? Uh, well, I think the term light rail's been rather um, destroyed by the Labor government. What they were doing wasn't even light rail. Light rail is basically a tram. And um, for reasons unknown only to themselves, they hired a whole lot of consultants. Everyone got their snouts in the trough. And they went mad, really. And they were going to have tunnels down Dominion Road. And it was going to cost billions and billions of dollars. And right from the start, I said, this is crazy. I didn't like it. Because one of the things, two, two very important things I tell people who work for me, and this is whether they've worked for me in the past and other companies or wherever else is. First of all, what is the problem we're fixing? And then secondly, can you do it better, cheaper, faster? Well, they, Labor and all the people that they hired for that thing, it's the same with Three Waters, they didn't actually identify what the problem they were fixing was. What do you think the problem is? Well, if they were going to do something about that had wheels in it, it had to be a transport thing. And then it became a housing thing, somehow or other. And then they burrowed under the... They spent ridiculous sums of money to write reports about burrowing under the ground in a city that's got but lava flows in the area where they were going to burrow as well. But what, so, what do you think we're, we're trying to solve here? What, what do you well, want uh, the government uh, to solve? First of all, they could never explain to me what the problem was they were solving. It started off as a bus to the airport, but there's a very good bus that goes from the top of... K road out to the airport now, and then and it was do you a. Think that's the issue that there's no tra direct transport link from the airport. No, I don't think that was the issue at all. I think that Auckland's got a whole lot of transport problems that don't necessarily have anything to do with trams. Um, um, what we, the biggest problem in Auckland with transport is pe people in Wellington meddling and telling us what we need. We don't need tunnels under the harbour. We didn't need a tunnel under the Menden Road. So what we about? We need to have. A, we we have been developing an integrated plan that that shows how Auckland's transport will go. For for goods and people, not just people. Um, when, when things go wrong, people worry about goods more than they worry about people. When the, when the, um, after the floods, which you just 
talked about and Northland got cut off. They weren't worried about people going north, they were worried about groceries going north mm. and exports coming south. And so we've lost the importance of, of, of freight. And um, so we're developing an integrated plan that shows where all the people are going to be going and where the goods have got to go. And that leads you to completely different um, responses than harbour crossings or things down Dominion Road. And on top of that, oh, in the meantime, there's a lot of cheap things you can do to speed up buses too, like dynamic lanes and putting um, transponders on, or using the transponders that are on the buses to wake up the lights. So are you saying that the council, when, when you talk about this with the incoming government, that you're going to say our priority is actually looking at getting freight across the Freight city. and people moving in sensible ways across our city into the places where the growth is and where the problems are. There's more of a problem out north west than there is going down Dominion Road. And there um, certainly isn't a problem about getting across the harbour. What communication have you here had with Christopher Luxon or anybody within the National Party since the election? Oh, Chris and I get on quite well. He rang me the day afterwards and uh, he and I are uh, more business than, than politics, to be honest. And um, so w I think we're going to get on pretty well. We both understand the need for um, improving our export income because if you don't cre create a wealthy country, you can't afford all these things. Um, and both of us had experience in China and India and, and, and in business and so... We chat quite a lot about that, and I also chat to, to um, Samir Brown, who is possibly going to be the Minister of Transport, to say, you know, we will decide what Auckland wants, and you can work with us on what Auckland wants, and then you go down to Wellington and get out, get the large chunk of cash that Auckland sends down to Wellington, and send the right amount back to us. Are you and don't hire consultants that, without telling me. What has his response been to that, Samir Brown or Christopher Luxon? Well, Christopher Luxon is a practical business guy and he understands exactly what I'm talking about. And he says it's quite... Uh, there's nothing that's not sensible and plain so about what I want to do. That, better, so cheaper, faster. Better use of money. I really hate wasting money. And I see that last government wasted a fortune on unrecoverable consulting fees for things which are never going to get built. All that money they could have spent on those things would have fixed away potholes. Have you, have you asked Christopher Luxon or, or Simeon Brown, we would like more control, and are you saying that they've oh, Well, I think if you re we put out a, uh, our manifesto, manifesto for Auckland, which bluntly says that right the way through, mm. and all the political parties which are going to make up the government can see that that is sensible. Uh, have they said... Oh, they all, yeah, they all like the overall f thrust of it. I mean, there'll be squabbles about small bits with inside it, but mm. we're just saying Auckland needs to determine Auckland's future. Mm. It's insulting to have um, uh, companies set up by Wellington th that have import um, Wellington-based chairs into fly up to Auckland at great expense. I mean, I've been the mayor for a year and I haven't cost a rate pays a penny of flying to Wellington. I just don't go there. One thing I wanted to ask you just quickly about before we finish is uh, when I was off, I had a morning, I had to go into town in, um, in a taxi and I had this massive taxi van turn up that was just for me. And I thought, oh God, this seems a bit silly. Don't you do but Uber? <laughs> it, well, oh, no, I couldn't do Uber, it was very early well, in the morning. Well, that's because you're, <laughs> someone else is paying, I suppose. <laughs> no, it wasn't, actually, I was, unfortunately. Um, if I could claim it back, I would. Um, but we're getting off topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you've wandered off topic too already. <laughs> but this taxi said, actually, you're in luck because because I'm a van, I can go down the bus lanes, and, and you know, National have been talking about potentially these rapid transit lanes as well. And then I found out, so in Australia, taxis can go down bus lanes, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Wellingtonians, I think you might be able to too. Is that something you'd look at for Auckland, taxis being allowed to use the bus lanes? Um, well, I don't, think it, I don't think we want to encourage people just to get in advance to get around a, a thing. If they've got four passengers, I mean, I'm quite happy to have T3 or T4 mm. in the bus lanes as well. Yeah. Not T2. Right. And, um, and I don't want them having blow-up dolls just in the seats just to cheat. So That's you'd the have idea to have more about, cameras But those then. sorts of things there, those are simple, low-cost ways of shifting people around. So I'm open to all of those sensible things. Not necessarily someone cheating on the things, but... Um, <laughs> I wasn't, of, let me just be clear, I wasn't cheating. <laughs> Oh, well, no, but, I mean, you benefited from something and it made you think about something and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that either. So, um, 
getting around the city and learning from what it's like is, is really important. I mean, I walk to work most days, and so all sorts of things you see when you're walking a bit slowly about stuff. And I bet. People sit in the, in the lights, sitting on their phones is a <laughs> um, Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown, thank you very much. Um, keep us posted about whether those uh, T3 and T4s are allowed in the bus lane. Um, it's 14 <laughs> away from 8. OK, thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, um, Melissa, you asked about Wellington. So there's bus lanes in Wellington that can be used by buses, bicycles, motorcyclists, scooters and in-service taxis. And then there are bus-only lanes, which can be uh, only used by buses. So there's two different types. Yeah, well... It's a slightly confusing. Using for people, I would have It's not a bad idea, Ryan, but but taxi drivers cheat pretty quickly, so you'd have to. I'd, it'd have to be when you've got at least four, three passengers in there. But you could, yeah. couldn't you get taxi companies to pay for this, um, right? Me. So that then they could help fund more public transport. Yeah, you go far. You pay. You go faster. <laughs> there's a, there's another. And as for the blow up dolls, well. That is cheating. People shouldn't be doing that. There's they were doing that in America. That's where I got that from. In California, you could rent um, people facsimiles to go down the motorway. Oh, um, <laughs> no, blow-up dolls are for the bedroom, Wayne. They're away from eight o'clock. <laughs>